In this video, I'll be sharing six steps to getting a New Zealand study visa. Kiara Fan is your girl, the Sassy Engineer. Previously, I shared five steps to getting a New Zealand work visa. In this video, I'll be sharing six steps to getting a New Zealand study visa. And this is especially useful for people who are looking to study in New Zealand. Before I get into it though, if you are seeing my face for the first time, uh, welcome to the community. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to join us and learn about New Zealand. Like this video and the rest of my videos. If you are looking to come into New Zealand, there is a playlist on my channel called Coming to New Zealand. Make sure you check out that playlist. It's got everything you need to know about coming to New Zealand, the different pathways you can use and all the information about the different visas that you can apply for. Think about a New Zealand visa that you can use to come to New Zealand. It's on my channel. Okay? Make sure you check out that playlist. And if you know anyone who needs to know this information, share it to them as well. And I also have a playlist specifically for studying in New Zealand. And this would really be relevant to people who are looking to study in New Zealand. So I have collected a playlist that you can also go through it. Think of anything about studying in New Zealand. It's on that channel. I also have my blog. In case you don't, you're one who doesn't like to, you know, watch YouTube videos and all that, you can check out my blog, thesassengineer.com, and go to the Study in New Zealand page and learn everything about it. And before I forget, make sure you check out the description box because there are topics that are relevant to the subject matter, which is Study in New Zealand, in the description box. Check out those videos, watch the videos on that links before you ask your questions okay all right let's get into the topic of this video the six steps to getting a new zealand student visa who needs a student visa anyone who is coming to new zealand to study we need a student visa first step is research 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 i cannot emphasize this enough research is very important first of all you are coming here to study so you should know how to research ask questions you spend if you spend a lot of time on social media you have your phones you have your mobile phones you go on tiktok you go on facebook you go on instagram whatever social media twitch whatever you go on there you watch videos you laugh at humors you comment you fight with people on twitter or whatever you use your data to do all that that same data is what you should use to research you should be able to take out a few minutes or even an hour to do your research what is research simply going on your web browser typing asking your web browser like google or bing or whatever you use ask them question there's so much information out there all you just need to do is to look for it research your study options what do you want to study masters phd b engine what are the requirements to get this you know admission what is the available to you do they offer it in the same title for instance chemical engineering in your country maybe process engineering in another country in what department is it the tertiary institution that you're interested in is it university is it institution of institute of technology are they approved to admit international students do they offer the course that you want to um, study there are eight universities in new zealand there are many institutions of technologies check to be sure that they can admit international students so you will not have any issues when you get to applying for your visa what are the types of student visas because there are a few types of student visas here the common one that is relevant to international students is a fee paying student visa research the student visa requirements in case you don't have you don't meet the eligibility criteria you start gathering and doing all the things you need to do to meet the eligibility criteria check out this video that i made on how to apply for student visa it also covers student visa requirements eligibility criteria the types of documents you require to add on the process the cost and everything so make sure you check this video okay and also find out the cost of the visa application you don't want to be surprised again when you check this how to apply for a student visa video on my channel you would learn about the application fees research for your spouse research your partner's or spouse visa option some of you would like to come with your partner and children so your family what are the options they have what are their visa options that one you don't have a problem because everything you need to know is on my channel check out the video on how to bring your family if you are on a student visa and make sure you check the description box because there's a list of relevant videos too so videos to bring your children to bring your partner on a work visa or your children on a student visa can your children study while you are also studying in new zealand can they go to school 
for those who have school age children so make sure you check this video on bringing your family to new zealand on a student visa I also learn about the types of accommodation like you would have seen in my channel on my channel there are different types of accommodation some accommodation would favor students more than the others so i have all talked about how to apply where to find them in this video one two three understand the cost of living in new zealand is going to be very important to you as a student because you are going to be broke <laughs> as you know that we are in cost of living crisis so things are not as easy as they used to be you are going to be a student so you are most likely not going to be working full time depending on your degree program cost of living will be very important to you know how the cost of living in new zealand are you able to survive this based on your funding your situation and all that i talked about all of this in the cost of migration video on my channel so check out this video to learn all about that when applying for admission you may need to provide english language tests depending on where you got your degree how long ago you finished your last you completed your last degree so all of these things will determine if you need an english language test the english language test many of them are recognized ielts is a popular one but it's also um um, the one that starts with P, P, F, Cambridge, check with your university, your prospective university to see what English language test do they require? What is the minimum point that you need to be able to get admission? Some universities may require you to provide certified copy of your documents to post it to them, physical certified copies. So find out if you need this thing. If you are confused in any way, write the um, school of in the international student department or for instance the sort of like customer care anyway in university of Auckland they call it ask Auckland so write them and ask this question do not be afraid of course it will take three to five working days before they respond if you can call call but don't just assume anything you don't understand get in touch with them and ask questions for PhD students I always recommend you get in touch with the group service coordinator usually someone like the he the person oversees the, the um, department and can know who to direct you to so you do that PhD students may require to have a supervisor before they apply it all depends on the university and the department especially the department or the faculty basically so the faculty requirement so make sure that you find out you may not need to have a supervisor before you apply but most often you need reach out to people in that your supervisors and um, research group learn about their current supervisors research area of interest these are some of the things that as a phd student you should be doing also check if you can work while studying because as a student some people some students can work full-time but most students cannot work full-time but there are some students which may not even be able to work because of maybe their funding requirements or all those things make sure you find out if you can work while you're studying how long can you work while you're studying i have talked about this as well learn about the future job opportunities to stay in new zealand some people would love to stay back after studying some people come with the mindset i can never stay in new zealand and then they come to new zealand like hmm maybe i can stay back and work for a bit you will need job opportunities that is why it's good to learn about the future job opportunities this video will serve as a guide to show you what you need to know if you're thinking of staying back after studying everything you need to know is on there so check out that video the study in new zealand playlist on my channel has everything you need to know about studying in new zealand so make sure you check out that video and once you've gathered all the knowledge and information that you need the next step would be to apply for admission it could look very tedious but i mean you just make sure you put in the effort your phd students you are going to be doing research so you should be able to do research before you even start doing the research so this is sort of like preliminary test okay so do that underground work step three is to get an unconditional offer of place keyword is unconditional so sometimes you'll be given an offer of place but it is conditional you have to meet that condition some conditions may be that they want an english language test another condition may be that they want certified copies of your document or they need you to prove something just whatever condition it is they are going to put it there you cannot apply for your student visa with a conditional offer of place so conditional admission letter you cannot do that so whatever conditions there are given you are given if you need to challenge that condition 
challenge it if you need to take steps to make sure you meet that condition and fulfill it then take those steps you cannot move forward if your offer of place is conditional once you get the offer of place you are almost ready you're almost there you're halfway there you should start gathering your documents the fourth thing you need to do is to gather all your documents so now you know the standard documents that you need for a visa application which is identity showing that you have good character and that you have good health so if you're going to be studying for more than 12 months you're definitely going to be showing good character which is police certificate and good health which is medical certificate so you may also need to show chest x-ray all these things you can see from the how to apply for a student visa video <laughs> definitely you will need to get a medical certificate which means that you need to go to panel doctors which means that you need to book early and get all those data all those information you have to show proof of genuine intention your offer letter already covers genuine intention but it goes beyond that because New Zealand immigration New Zealand wants to see that you want to come and study and that you have something back home that is going to keep you back home. So I will try so they need to see that you have something back home. So show economic ties as people call it. It can be work, it can be family, it can be investment, it can be all of the above. But you need strong ties to your home country. You also need to show that you have money to study because studying is very expensive okay especially if you are not doing a phd it's very expensive so source of income this could be from your own job maybe you have a source of income you need to show that proof if you don't then you can go through scholarship but immigration new zealand doesn't recognize all the scholarship of course they recognize new zealand scholarship because it's new zealand they recognize some international scholarship they recognize scholarship from some countries but there are some countries that even if you have scholarship from the government they don't recognize it how do you resolve that that's something that you work out but i guess in that case it to fall under financial guarantor but some countries countries will not want to sign that form because it's going to be like a slap on their face we are the government we are giving you scholarship who do they think they are to not recognize our scholarship so it's just something that you have to figure out how to go about it but just know that it happens i talked about that in this cost of migration video you can use sponsors sponsors are defined differently for immigration new zealand a sponsor has to be a new zealand citizen or new zealand resident if your sponsor does not fall under those categories then that person is not seen as a sponsor to immigration new zealand that person would maybe be a financial guarantor but even that they are conditions i talked about that in study new zealand video so check that out you need to show proof of funds check out my proof of funds video to learn everything you need to know about showing proof evidence of having money basically evidence of english language meeting english language criteria may be required and the last one that will be required is the tuition fee payment when i talked about it in this video some of you had questions if i do this if i do that if i pay half does that mean i should pay all i'm going to say it here again you don't need to pay the tuition fee for the complete length of study so let's say you're studying for three years you don't need to pay tuition fee for three years you need to pay tuition fee for at least one year but new zealand immigration would only give you visa for the year that you've paid tuition fee for and the minimum is one year so that means if you pay tuition fee for one year they give you one year if you pay for two years they give you two years something in that line and also remember the miscellaneous so cost of living which is twenty thousand new zealand dollars for a student while you're gathering your documents also find out the cost of this visa because application fee depends on how you apply and where you're applying from most visa application fee depend on those two things now that you've gathered your documents you are ready to submit your application so go online and submit your application that's the easiest route to do that you can still use paper but what is the need of having to post your things to a different country when you can sit down in the comfort of your home and apply for your visa why why do you like stress so submit your application online is what i always suggest but also know that you're doing this application online you're not doing face to face with someone so they're not gauging your body reaction how you react to questions and all that so make sure that you add documents that would reduce all doubt or re reduce it to minimum put yourself in the shoes of the immigration officer uh, if you receive that application that looks like your own exactly like your own would you approve that person's visa if you won't why that's why are the evidence that you need to put to remove that doubt there's no age limit to getting a student visa 
so far as you have admission from an approved NZ tertiary institution you shown genuine intention you've meet the visa requirements you can get a student visa what you actually have to think about though is the type of program that you're studying because the program that you're studying and the level would likely affect your um, chances of getting a study work visa and even pathway to residency check out this video on staying back to study in New Zealand watch the coming to New Zealand playlist to learn about the different pathways to residency the work visa that will really relate to you will be the post study work visa that's why you have to check out this video and also look at the five steps of getting a New Zealand work visa that is important this one so that you will see the steps of getting a New Zealand work visa and you know equip yourself with the knowledge ahead of time for when you are ready is advised that you should apply at least eight eight weeks before you plan to come to New Zealand. So eight weeks is what? Eight weeks is two months. So at least two months before you intend to come to New Zealand apply. I would say apply more than two months. Apply like six months. Especially if you live anywhere outside Asia, Australia, this region, Pacific Asia, Pacific region. If you live outside this region, apply at least six months ahead. Why am I saying this? When you submit your application, you will wait to get a decision, right? Once you get a decision, you have to book plane tickets. And those things are expensive, right? now the cost of coming from nigeria to new zealand is around almost four thousand dollars they just say three five so you can imagine so that's return ticket one way is still like two five so that's expensive you can imagine waiting two months to the time do you want to gamble that think about it so when you submit your application make sure that you submit early so that you get the decision decision early so that in case they deny your visa which is highly likely if you don't give enough documents then you have time to reapply when you're reapplying you're applying fresh or paying a different fees so once you submit your application you are at the last step which is generally out of your control which is waiting for your visa decision and that one is out of your control all you just now need to do is wait sometimes they can get back to you and ask for more documents but from my experience for student visa highly unlikely especially if you are from where i am from highly unlikely they'll get back to you they'll just reject and ask you to apply again like you know it's a temporary visa so you cannot appeal it you just have to apply again and pay another application fees that's why it's important at the fourth step when you are gathering your documents everything that will clear any doubts in the immigration officer's mind add it but also be careful you don't add documents that will cause more problems to you i would like to say that you can apply for your visa by yourself you don't necessarily you don't need an immigration advisor it well let me refresh it is not immigration new zealand's requirement that you use an immigration advisor or immigration lawyer you can apply for your visa by yourself you only use an immigration lawyer or advisor because you want to to apply for admission you can decide to use education agent it's very common in asia asian countries um and australia you know this asia pacific area it's very common to find education agents that help you find a mission it's not very common outside in like far away places doesn't mean that it's non-existent existent there are people who can help you to find a mission of course they're going to pay them it's not free but if you don't want to use them you can do it yourself those are the six steps to getting a new zealand student visa let me recap research 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 then you apply for admission and get an unconditional offer of place and after that you start gathering your documents which is step number four gather your documents once you've gathered all the necessary documents you submit your visa application and after you submit your visa application you wait for a decision to be made information on the processing time is on this video about how to apply for student visa or you check out the immigration new zealand website the student visa fact sheet you can google v paying student visa or just google new zealand student visa that is the common one so that you you know start planning early some people's main issue is usually proof of funds because you need to show on top of the fact that you've paid your tuition fee you need to also have twenty thousand new zealand dollars i need to have extra let's just say one one seven or let me just round it up to two thousand dollars on at what travel that's why some people find it difficult but you can apply for scholarships what our advice is check out the fine print because some scholarships will need you to go back to your country and stay out of new zealand for at least two years if you are entertaining the idea of staying back to work then that is not a, going to be a good scholarship for you even though it covers everything you cannot stay back to work you have to go back those are the things that you have to consider while you're applying for scholarships or funding i know it's not bad to go back to your home country but some people would like to you know experience working outside their home country so if you have that kind of scholarship it may deter you from having that experience i was supposed to keep this brief but i've ended up making it long
on i hope you found this video helpful make sure you click the subscribe button to join the community click the like button to like this video check out the study in new zealand playlist also check out the coming to new zealand playlist on my channel everything you need to know is on there those resources are very free for you to use watch all the videos to the end check the description box if you need to contact me detail on how to reach me out in the description box if you want a one-on-one -on -one, there's also the link there check the description box very very important thanks for staying to the end it's your girl the sassy engineer toodles